this is a procession on the feast day of St. Stephen. And as you can see, it's um, all very colorful because people make it a point to wear uh, brightly colored uh, dresses and clothes. So that is what I always wanted to capture. The, the sheer colors and shades and yeah. uh, uh, the balloons that come, the buntings and uh, even the red and white, uh, the capes that the men wear during the procession. That's typical of a Goan feast or it's particularly more so here? Or uh, no, it's, it's very typical of a, a Goan feast, any Goan okay. feast, where, whether it is Hindu or or Christian because people come with uh, brightly colored clothes. It's like color is like, you know, part of uh, the very, very, yeah, part of the festivities. And uh, what's this? This is uh, another equally uh, colorful festival. It's called the Umbrella Festival of Sotrio. Yeah. And it is held only in one village in Goa, that's in Kumpoli. And uh, the festival is actually about uh, the palanquin of the goddess Sri Shantadurga yeah. is uh, brought back uh, from the nearby village of uh, Fatorpa to Kumpoli because yeah. the temple was earlier destroyed in Kumpoli and she was whisked away to safety in Fatorpa. Yeah. So once a year during Shigmo, which is like the equivalent of Holi, yeah. uh, the goddess is ceremoniously brought back to the village of Kumpoli and everybody like, you know, dances and sings and there's a lot of color in the air. And both and, Catholics and Hindus uh, participate. Yes, and that's so. the uh, sp special thing about this festival and that's what I've tried to depict. That both Hindus and uh, Christians take part in this festival because even the Christians acknowledge the fact that she is the goddess who belong to their village and they even come and perform the arti and uh, take part in the, uh, pray to the goddess on, the, on that day. And then? Uh, this is probably this the most colourful. Uh, yeah, it is the most colourful also. I think they are all <laughs> very colourful. This is a dance that is performed by the Goli men. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's called in various names. They call it the Powo, they call it the Gaja, they I call see. it the Chapai also. I but see. the term which is most commonly used by the Gauris are Powo. So I, I, I have used that term for them. And they wear uh, long white uh, robes, which actually, to me, also reminds me of the Sufi dancers, Jewish dancers. And um, they have these uh, colored, red colored uh, decorations on it. And this dance is actually done uh, as a thanksgiving to the goddess. The, the Golis have their own earth mother goddess called Malchi Pandar, which is like a, the Goli goddess, high goddess. So it is like a thanksgiving to the goddess for the favors that she has granted during the year. In the harvest, after uh, the harvest? Or it's no. uh, yeah, October maybe. The, the, this community really doesn't have a harvest festival I as see. such because they were traditionally pastoral uh, tribe, okay. a pastoral uh, community. And so they go to the villages where the thanksgiving has to be done and they dance out in the open. I and see. then move from village to village. Yeah. Uh, this painting is like where they parboil uh, Paddy and uh, like this is in, my, in our own backyard in the village of Santisteva, like how we used to do it uh, when we were children. So yeah. there would always be one or two laborers called in to assist yeah. and like neighbors would also come around and so there was always help I see. Uh, for it. And it always started at night because we wanted to start the boiling when uh, uh, it's not very hot. I see. So wait for the sun to go down and then start the boiling and then just put the paddy onto the open bamboo Match. mats and then dry them the next day. I see. So boiling paddy is that for generally a kind of a night activity okay. when the sun is not very hot. I see. This one is uh, another painting which uh, like this is the, uh, the little patch of forest that we had in our village. I see. Uh, which was like right in the center of uh, paddy field. Okay. And uh, every year before the monsoon or actually starting from January onwards where it really gets dry and the uh, trees start shedding their leaves. So people would have these large net bags which we call Zablo. And uh, we would stuff them with leaves, uh, yeah. especially leaves uh, of the jackfruit and cashew tree. Which are easy to burn. Yeah, they, they catch fire very easily. So these huge net bags would be filled up with uh, dried leaves and, and we as kids like would you know be around and try and climb up on the trees and like... So, so that's you in the yellow dress? Probably, probably. And like you know if we had a family dog or something they would I also see. follow you uh, along with it. And, like it was like, you know, everybody would be around and uh, take the leaves home. For I the, see. The And this? This is drying paddy. So, yeah. uh, because people would uh, have lots of paddy to dry, and uh, the neighbors and families would get together.
and, yeah. and actually flatten out huge uh, tracts of, uh, of herbs and uh, paste them with cow dung. Yeah. And so you didn't need uh, special bamboo mats or anything. Yeah. You could just uh, you could just uh, dry out the paddy on the open right. ground. Right. And in the summer, people would even like the men especially would yeah. even use it to sleep. sleep. It was very warm. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, 